Okay, just before tonight's meeting then, special meeting tonight, Matty Bates. This is going to be a good one, isn't it? I hope so, yeah. It's, um, it's the first time the Gladiators have ever faced the Falcons, so um, a bit of history as well. Obviously, they faced the Devils before, but um, no, so it's, it's cool, um, especially with Steve Luxon being here. So, team named after him and his hometown team, so it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. That, now, where does he place his allegiance on the hometown? Wow. Or, uh, or here at Plymouth in the Coliseum? It's kind of the same with myself, because obviously I'm an Exeter boy as well, but um, a draw would be nice. I'd like a draw. Well, it's our first time here in the Coliseum, and it's great. We've only got here about 20 minutes ago, but looking around, everyone looks uh, well out for tonight. They're all good yeah. spirits and just are on for a party tonight as well as tomorrow. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a long weekend, I think, but um, it'll be uh, one to be remembered, I think. But uh, Now, the Plymouth Gladiators this season had quite a few rain-offs here, haven't you, which has been really disappointing. It's very important to get those home meetings in. Yeah, I um, think we had a month with no, just over a month with no home meetings, so... Um, wasn't I? I mean, we did try and run one meeting, but it just done so much damage to the track, which we took a bit of abuse on social media about. But we sort of took the idea, or sort of stuck to our guns, and thought, right, until the weather's completely cleared, we won't run any meetings. You've just said about the track not being as good as you wanted it to, to handle that pressure of the social media from both sides of the fence. It's, I guess it's hard because I mean, I, you know, I can I can sympathise with fans because I mean, obviously, I was a fan once as well, and. You know, as a rider, I know how annoying it is to come to a track and it's not raceable. And but, you know, it, it's. I think what people don't grasp is me and Mark just aren't. Especially Mark, we're not just sat around all day and like, oh, it's Friday, better go put some water on it. You know, it's. I mean, Mark puts so many hours down here, and our track staff do, and it's just. I feel bad for them because you know, you know, you're never going to please everyone, but um, it's it's just hard because especially for me because I'm quite, you know, um quite fiery anyway so uh but obviously now with the job rollers team manager and co-promoter not allowed to say certain things which again you know you shouldn't anyway because you shouldn't really sink to those levels but yeah sometimes i gotta bite my tongue pretty hard <laughs> it bleeds quite a lot <laughs> all right well i know that your team are just about to go on the track where you're going to go with them so let you go thanks so much for your time no let's have a great party tonight cool. and of course tomorrow thanks as well. for coming down means a lot no worries joined in the pits by alan spencer team manager of the exeter chris richards falcons tonight great to see alan and how great is it to have a, a kind of a national league standard meeting here yeah at plymouth uh really looking forward to it um it's something uh, we've been planning for some time now um i think we've uh, put a, a pretty good side together uh, unfortunately, we've got to do rider replacement through through injury, um, but I think uh, both sides are pretty even, and I think we're going to have a good good meeting all round. Now, since we've last seen you, it's all been go for you guys. Many people may say Exeter and got home, but you guys are working 24 hours a day. You are really putting it in, aren't you, to try and bring this club back? We are. Um, yeah, we, we've been knocked back so many times now uh, with bits of land, um, and at this point moment in time we have um, a councillor uh, which is actually having a meeting next Monday um, on um, a, a bit of land that we're looking at uh, but again that's a long way off you know so um, we're working on it still but you know it's just a waiting game all the time and it gets very frustrating yeah but passion and determination will keep you going forward exactly, and eventually yes. all that hard work hopefully will pay off um, but I've got to say how great is it to have uh, Steve Luxon over tonight oh. I mean he's buzzing we Absolutely saw him last fantastic. night on the island and, and here now and yeah. obviously well, what's happening tomorrow we'll get on to in a minute but he is buzzing. He is absolutely buzzing. Um, I don't think he slept actually. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it's the first time I've actually met the guy. Um, I've spoken to him many a times um, but it's the first time I've met him and uh, what, a, what a, 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 a lovely guy, you know, absolutely lovely guy. Um, and uh, he, he brings a, a lot of happiness to the sport and um, he helps several clubs, several riders uh, what a guy to have on board for it for the extra Falcons. The vibe around is great tonight. Really it's fantastic. Really uh, easy going. Everyone's smiling. Oh, everyone's really up for it. I think um, even yeah, even it's, it's it's a 90 celebration. But um, you know, everyone wants to have fun. Um, we don't want anyone to get hurt out there. Um, and just enjoy themselves and just hope we can all go home safely. Gladiator. Yes. <laughs> uh, Speedway um, sponsor. Garage <laughs> Mahal. <laughs> Just, just great to have you back over here in the UK, Steve. Oh my God, I can't even describe. Uh, actually, it got emotional when I came down the M5. Uh, it's my home, you know? It's one thing coming to watch the Speedway meeting whilst you're in the UK, but to come and watch the Exeter Chris Richards Falcons here, what's that feeling going to be like for you when they turn, turn the wheels with the race jackets on? Well, this is, uh, 
is it, it's really more than emotional. Uh, obviously, growing up here, uh, Plymouth and Exeter were biggest rivals with with uh, football, uh, and I think it, it still holds true today. I, I talked to the fans here tonight, and uh, it, it just, it's still a, a kind of a grudge. I don't hold that because obviously I'm involved with both teams. Uh, this year's save in Exeter was the biggest thing. Uh, 90th year, it's hard to even imagine. 90 years ago, these guys were racing, and uh, I, I know I know all the names, uh, the passions there, uh, um, and t to save the team and hold them together this year is is amazing. And now, to be involved and to have the team here in Plymouth name the Gladiators is just amazing. I c can't even describe. Um, you know, collecting my stuff and trying to be around Speedway, but living in Florida, uh, you know, I'm kind of disconnected to some point, but being here now, this is home. Just the, the glorious Devon, the green fields and being home, and now being involved with both these teams, I, I can't even describe how well I feel. Now over here in the UK, a lot of people now know the name Steve Luxon, and they know the Garage Mahal, but actually it really is, people are getting to see your social media, your videos, like you said when you did your opening, you always video them, you put them out there. So people really do now understand the fact that you've got a lot of memorabilia over there and how your heart is. And also, in the Speedway Star, I didn't realize just how many riders, when you had your advert in there back along, how many riders you actually helped that year. You know, you're involved not just with teams, not just with riders, and not just your passion at home and with Exeter. It goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. And, um, you know, I have a good friend uh, back in the States, Jeff Hall. Uh, the two of us, we were disconnected with Speedway. He lives in Texas, side of in Florida. We don't have any tracks. And we were friends on Facebook uh, about 12 years ago. Uh, and uh, we decided we're both going to go to New York and uh, hang out for the weekend and get involved in Speedway again. And we really wanted to start some kind of junior academy. And that's how it all really started. And it's, it's just taken off from there. Um, and, and we kind of, we kind of wanted to bring... Um, uh, you know, anything we could do to bring young kids through the sport. And um, uh, unfortunately, Jeff went through some health issues, and my garage, Mahal, is really just kind of uh, mushroomed since those days. Uh, but I've tried to keep that ideal of, of what we really believed in, which was uh, give back to young riders. We try to give back. We really do. We just try to give back to the sport. So well, It's great to see you over here in the UK. We're going to speak to you loads over this weekend because we're coming to the party tomorrow night as well. But for the moment, enjoy tonight. Let's okay. get the riders out there on track and have a laugh, yeah? Brilliant. Well, the bikes are warming up as we prepare for this very special challenge match. really does bring two old rivals back together. The Exeter Falcons, desperate to find a new home in Devon. And of course, the Gladiators of Plymouth, who got their new home here in Devon. But the two team managers have certainly put together a very interesting lineup. Great to see those uh, Falcons race jackets on track once again. Take a look at the visitors. We've got Ben Morley at number one. He rides normally for the Isle of Wight. Chad Wurtzfield also rides for the island. He's his partner. Henry Atkins there. Mildred Fen Tiger at number three. Ryan Terry Daly from Leicester at number four. Rider replacement at number five. Sam Bully and Kay Ward make up the reserves for the Falcons. For the Gladiators, well, it's Ben Wilson at number one, Adam Shepard at two, Tom Young at three, Ryder replacement at four, Richard Andrews at five, Jamie Bursil at six, and at number seven, Chris Andrews. Well, lots of smiling faces here, and uh, it's going to be an interesting one to see how it goes. There is confirmation of the lineups as they come out on parade here. And uh, the Gladiators, well, they've had a tough old season here in the National Development League. But uh, they really do put on a good show here and uh, it is great to see. One of the uh, tiniest tracks in British Speedway. Times are normally around the uh, 52nd mark. Well, he's some of the old veterans here and look at those race jackets then. We've got a Long Eaton one there. We've got a Wimbledon one and we have an old Exeter Falcons one as well. 
mini mascot, everything going on here today. And uh, it is great to see uh, Steve has come over from the United States of America for this one. Of course, he was one of the original gladiators and that puts a lot of time and money into sponsorship of British Speedway and how he would love to see his beloved Exeter Falcons come back and race in British Speedway. So here we go then, Andrews on the outside, Andrews on gate number two, Wurtsfield on three, and Ward on the inside, and away they go. Charge for the first turn, no real surprise, Richard Andrews has gone in front. Into the bottom turn there, Andrews leading the way, second place it is Wurtsfield. Third place, it is Ward. At the back there, it is Chris Andrews. Looking fast at the moment, it is Richard Andrews. Very, very popular rider. Very popular down at Arlington when he ran for Eastbourne. So leading the way there, still in second place and going awfully wide into the fence there, Chad Wernsfield. And down he goes, awkward looking tumble there. And well, just about managed to get out the way there. And uh, the race has been stopped. I think it will be awarded. It has indeed been awarded. Let's have a look at it again there. Awkward tumble. It's ones like that that can do damage and watch him get out the way there. So the uh, different angle, not nice whichever way you look at it. Pleased to say he is up and okay. Win. How do you find it out there? Yeah, it was good. Nice to get back riding, obviously, after my injury and stuff. So, enjoyed it. Glad to get the first one out of the way and hopefully more tonight. We're used to uh, filming a lot of racing at the Isle of Wight, obviously, a bigger track. You ride that wow and you come here and you ride this one wow and this is like really small. Yeah, that's the plan. Obviously, the island was my first kind of track, but felt I'd progress more as a rider if I joined Plymouth. Just so need to ride the bike differently, like a lot tighter. And so, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Kept teams doing good, so hopefully more wins and it will be all good. Okay, keep it going, mate. Cheers. It's a new look, Ben, here. That's it. It's my new hat, I reckon. Great first, yeah. <laughs> Great first ride out there. Uh, we just spoke to Jamie Burst, see he's enjoying it out there. How about yourself? Yeah, it's good, mate. Good first ride. It's always nice to get fresh air in the first one, so... Yeah, we're just trying to keep clean and stay like that, I reckon. Keep clean? Look at that race jacket. It's already got that, and you've been out in front. Yeah, I know, mate. Yeah, it's... Uh, that that means you're going gonna to have some bikes to clean tonight, then. Yeah, stoked tomorrow, so uh, a busy day. Long journey home, but okay. that's why we love it. Keep it going, mate. Nice one. Cheers, buddy. So a bit of veterans racing coming up next here. We see some bikes from the 50s and the 60s. And uh, we've got the race checkers there, as we said. Wimbledon, Long Eaton and Exeter. And these two valve upright engines. Looks like there is uh, chaps there going round. And how different the sport is nowadays. Fabulous memories for those of us, of course, who remember Long Eaton as the Rangers, the Archers, and later on as the Gladiators. Or the Invaders, I should say. Because the Gladiators are down here these days. The Exeter Falcons, of course, wonderful memories on that account as well. Those of us who remember Ivan Major, Scott Altree, Bob Kilby. There's been some wonderful ones. Martin Ashby, another one springs to mind. The late Kevin Holden is a personal favourite of mine. Mike Sampson, the list is endless. Of course, Mark Simmons, the you come near today. Bobby Eldridge, another one springs to mind. Bob Coles, Michael Coles. And, uh, well, there we go. Go over the memories. So this is an interesting one. There's Shepherd there having trouble getting their helmet colour on. Chris Andrews this time off the inside. There's Chad Wurtsfield in the white helmet. He will go from the outside. Kai Ward there on gate number two. So here we go then. Starting Marshall's got them in line. Green lights on, signal to the referee. Away they go. Chance for the first turn in Shepard, who's gone in front. 
Shepherd in front, Worksfield there in second place. Chris Andrews in third place, go round the bottom turn. Adam Shepherd, well he struggled for points so far today, but he's not struggling in this one here. He goes round that first and second turn, down the back straight. He's got his wheels in front, and he's found a line he seems to like this time. Chad Wurtsfield still chasing hard in second place. Problem at the back there for Kai Ward, who went down there. He's managed to get his bike off the green there. Well done to him there. And there is Shepard with one lap to go. Around the first and second turn. Second place at the moment. Chad Wurtsfield keeping him honest. Chris Andrews will pick up third place. But it will be a 4-2 to the Gladiators this time. Oh! Well, it's gone over the line in first place there, but my word, it's a horrible looking crash there for Adam Shepard, who really hooked up there. And uh, let's have a look at it again here. Well, he will get the win, because he went over with his bike. But that is another horrible looking crash there for Adam Shepard. Let's hope he is okay. The race has been awarded as a win for Adam Shepard because he did go over the line first. Let's look at his crash helmet, he was rather passionate about. Second place there, he went to Chad Wurtsville, Chris, to Chris Andrews third. 24-24. Okay, Chad, uh, we've got a bit of a lull here. Um, fortunately, we just had an accident there at the end of the race. Uh, Adam's down at the moment, but uh, in a similar position to uh, where you went down. Um, how did, first of all, how are you after your crash and how did, you, uh, how did it all pan out for you? Uh, I'm alright, it was just a bit, just coming around the corner, sort of locked up, then straight hit a bit of a rut, which sort of sent me straight, and I, my right hand foot rest dug into the fence, which sent me over the handlebars, and then I was alright, I was, I got up and I walked off the track, took all my helmet off and stuff, and then in heat 8, which was that heat, Adam Shepard did the same thing, but just went straight in, which caused him just to cartwheel fully over. Yeah, he's still on track, being seen to at the moment, so hopefully he'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to ask you, obviously you're a young lad, but uh, you would have heard a lot about the Exeter Falcons. Um, what does it mean to you to be wearing that race jacket today and representing the Falcons on their night of anniversary? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's been part of my family for all their life. It's my granddad and nan used to love coming down here. My sister watched their meeting three days after she was born and I came to their, we all came to their farewell match, so it, we've been to pretty much a lot of the meetings. So it's great to have you involved here tonight then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. It was nice to get asked. All right, well, have a, a good remainder of the, uh, the meeting there, Chad. No more shapes out there. No. <laughs> Stay safe and uh, ride fast, mate. Thank you. Okay, we're massive down here on the track then, obviously. Uh, big accident there at the end of that heat with Adam. First of all, how is Adam? Do you know? Any update? Um, it looks pretty pretty good that he's broken his collarbone. Um, they took his padding off and it looks pretty mangled. But um, the county ambulance is going to be about two hours, so they're going to take him to Derriford. Um, they've given him morphine, um, so even if they'd stayed and waited, we couldn't continue racing because the paramedic has to stay with him. But um, should be about a half hour sort of delay. But um, we've got Luxton here, and he, he can talk for England, so uh, and, and America. So. Um, but no, I mean, Adam's, you know, he's obviously gutted, but um, it's just, you know, nature of the beast, isn't it? It's, it's a downside of speed, isn't it? We all, we all want to see the guys out there, but it's too easy for us fans to, to sort of forget that in a split second they're yeah. on the floor and it hurts. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I think especially the odour you get, it's, um, you know, little slide-offs are a bit harder to get up from, but uh, he's, he's in high spirits, bless him, and... Um, you know, ho hopefully, I mean, it, it looks broke. It really does look broke, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it might not be. It might just be like a come out of place or something, but, um, no, I'm obviously we're wishing well, and um, any further updates I get, obviously, I'll let you guys know. Thanks very much, Brady. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, well, we've got a bit of break in the uh, racing today. We're joined by Liv Kilby, who's come down today to uh, take in some Plymouth action. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, magic. It's a shame that we've got the hold up, but, you know, it's the na nature of the beast, unfortunately. We just hope that it um, happens right after the crash. But it's lovely to come back. I haven't been down for a couple of years, so it's, it's nice to come and see everyone. Great. Of course, going great guns for you guys up at uh, Swindon. Cracking result for you guys last night as well. Yeah, we, we seem to have peaked at the right time. I mean, we did the th same thing in 2017. 
uh, where we started off pretty slow, then we got some momentum up, and then we were on just a great winning run. And the boys are just on fire. I mean, we've clocked 66 and 65 points in the last two home matches. So we're looking, we're looking good. We're still not assured, but we're looking good for the playoffs. And uh, the atmosphere is brilliant. Everything around Swindon at the moment is amazing. The track is riding really well. The guys are enjoying it. The relationship between track team and riders is brilliant. The fans are really on board. It's, the atmosphere is brilliant. It's, it's, it's super, super enjoyable there at the moment. Now, just looking at yourself, of course, Speedway's played a big part in your life throughout your entire life. Obviously, your father riding a legend within the sport. And uh, you've done some managerial stuff with the sprockets as well. And now you're commercial marketing manager as well <laughs> for Swindon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I haven't done is ridden, uh, ridden, ridden the bike properly. Do you know what? It is, yeah, I, I know what? I know more about this than anything else. I always say to people, my brain is like 95% speedway and 5% important stuff that I'm supposed to know. But I love the sport and, 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 you know, it's amazing to be involved. And, you know, I'm trying to promote Swindon like Swindon was promoted years and years ago and everyone goes on about what used to happen. We're trying to get the riders connected with the fans again at Swindon and it's happened over the last few weeks and the atmosphere's been superb. We've had things going on like pop bands and signing sessions and things going on for the kids. So we're working really hard to, to make that relationship with the fans. And, and over the last few weeks, granted it's been school holidays, you know, I'm not naive, I know that we'll have to work hard out of school holidays, but it's going really well, really well, I'm really pleased. Now, I don't know if it's just myself, but I take a step back and I look around now in the last couple of years in Speedway, we've got the guys down here at Plymouth, uh, bringing Plymouth back and working really hard. Great enthusiasm, obviously turning it into the Coliseum as well. Yeah. Steve Luxon's big smiles everywhere, yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yourself at Swindon, keeping things positive, Barry Bishop Barry, on the island. Yeah. It's great to see that positivity now. It's really starting to spread out in the sport. I think so. I think when you get that, when you, as long as it's a collective movement, I think you can get everybody on board. And, and I talk to Barry a lot of the Isle of Wight and, and, and Mark and Matty down here, I get on with really well. And, and, and it's almost like we've got to do this together. You know, we can all have successful clubs, but if we were working together with different ideas and different promotions, then as a unit and as a sport, we would kick on. And, and a lot of people say to me, do you watch Polish Speedway? Of course I watch Polish Speedway. You know, and oh, it's not like it is here. Well, no, it's not, but that's not to say that we can't strive to achieve that. And, and people are oh, not, not as good as it used to be. I hear a lot of negatives, but when you actually do come and you see a lot of what's going on, it's all positive. It's all positive. And so we, I mean, we're in the Supporters Cup final against Bellevue home and away. And we've organized with Bellevue to have, to look after the coach traveler the opposing supporters clubs brilliant great relationship we're looking after the fans we're going to run something special for them perfect we're all trying to pull and i think you're right in that we're now getting a few more people out there with a bit more not there's anything wrong with anybody that's been but different people new energy and we're just trying to kick it on a little bit that's the word it's energy it's oh, and people say to me i mean it's energy it's enthusiasm and and, and and jason doyle i mean i managed i was lucky to manage the swindon side against wolverhampton and, and doyle he said look your vibe is great because your vibe is what we need as a team you know we won the meeting relatively comfortably against walls but the energy was was great and he said if you can get the energy up within the pits then that will filter out and we're happy to sign the autographs and we're happy to get involved but you've got to have that vibe and that energy coming from the top and, and it filters down amongst everybody. So, uh, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I really, I, I love the sport and I'm enjoying what's going on at the moment. Now, of course, big, big weekend for Exeter Falcons, 90th yeah. anniversary. And um, you're going to be there tomorrow night at the big party as well. We're Look, covering looking, it. Looking good. forward to it, really am. I mean, as soon as Matty mentioned it was going on, I mean, me dad, me dad is, you know, he's best mate, me hero, every, everything. Uh, and to represent him is an honour. Um, and it'll be really nice. I mean, I've already spoke to Simo tonight, you know, Colsey, Richard Green, who was my favourite, one of my favourite Falcons. And tomorrow will be magic, you know, just to recall those stories. And my son Max is with me, who loves the sport. And for him to also experience that and hear about his granddad and, 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 and listen to the stories of ours, it's, it's magic. I'm, 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 I'm honoured to, to be a part of it. I'm honoured to be invited and, uh, and hugely honoured to be representing Dad. Great, so we can enjoy tonight, we can enjoy tomorrow. A uh, bit of nostalgia, it's great to see the youngsters out on track. Um, hopefully Adam's okay, obviously, just yeah, yeah, had a big off there. First but, and uh, foremost, yeah. It's great to see you here. And, Thank you. Uh, just yeah. keep it all going. Yeah, absolutely. Going. Yeah, absolutely. I'm working my way to the top. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, Mark Phillips then, uh, disappointing that the meeting hasn't finished with 15 heats tonight. Uh, obviously, Adam's health is most important, but uh, curfew is coming close, so unfortunately, we've stopped early. Yeah, it uh, actually stopped before it really got going. It was um, going to develop into a, into a good meeting. Unfortunately, these things happen, and it's demoralizing, depressing, and it's a pain in the ass, to be honest.
Well, we've spoken together and, and we've said, you know, the amount of rain offs you guys have suffered this year has just been unbelievable. And yet today, such good sunshine, good weather, great crowd turnout, everyone in good spirits and, you know. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't for bad luck, we wouldn't have any. It's, um, it's been one of those seasons. Last year, we had gorgeous weather all the way through. And um, this year, it's been the total opposite. Hopefully we won't get two seasons on the trot, we've got the same sort of weather and hopefully next season will uh, be a good one. Obviously the news today that you, you broke that Ian Jordan is, is coming on board as a capacity in the club, that's a great asset for the club isn't it? Yeah, it, it uh, really impressed me. We got um, overjoyed when Ian said he would come along board and, and join us as a commercial director. It's uh, what the club needs, we do need professional people around us. and. Um, what goes on behind the scenes is a lot more than what happens on a race day. It's, Definitely. Yeah, it's going to be, um, I'm sure Ian will do us a, a great job and uh, may we continue and progress. Of course, Matty Bates is doing a great job for you as well. Yeah, good old Matt. He's, uh, spent, we spent a lot of time on the, on the phone this last uh, week, that's for sure, trying to source riders and stuff. And um, Yeah, I'll probably get some people whinging about tonight, tomorrow, but uh, that's the way it is, it, it is unfortunate, that's the way it goes. All I, all I am thinking about now is um, we're still in the chase for the, for the playoffs, it is still possible. We need to win our home matches and get two points from, from uh, either of our two away meetings. And we're up, be up in the running still. Um, probably the wrong time to bring in new riders but it was needed might give us a, a kick on or it might um, kick us in and do, you know, do that it's All time right. will tell it will do okay well we're gonna let you go we'll see you tomorrow night and uh, yeah keep going Mark you're doing a grand job Danny thank you very much